Welcome, I'm Jane Treger. This is Talking Art. We're sitting in the Deerfield Arts Bank and we're continuing our conversation with local artists. So many, so many, and here, one by one, we're getting to talk to them and interview them. If, perchance, there's some questions that I'm not asking that you'd like me to ask, please let us know at the email at the bottom of the screen. So today we are speaking to Jenny Tibbetts. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Jane. So um, we're going to look at a lot of beautiful art, beautiful, and the colors are just like, just right for this season, I think. But uh, first I'd like to ask you, I ask everybody, where are you from and what brought you to this area of the world? Ah, well, I'm from England originally. And um, that's where I grew up. I came to this country in, uh, well, in my 20s, early 20s. And uh, I came with a, a former husband who had uh, a scholarship to go to Yale to do postgraduate work. And um, I was married and had two children. And uh, that took up a lot of my time. And um, later in life, he and I parted and I realized, actually I had been to art school in England for about uh, two years and I regretted that I hadn't continued with my education and so um, when I was a single mom I went back to school here in the States and uh, very, very gradually was able to get my bachelor's degree over a long period of time in art. But you continued, you did something more than that. I did. Uh, I just kept on going, basically, and got my, uh, a master's in art education and then an MFA in painting. So it's so a long period of time. A long period of time. Yeah. Were you teaching? Uh, I was part-time teaching at um, UMass when I was at UMass because when you're a graduate student there, you actually get to teach courses there by yourself, which was nice. I also taught part-time you were Brattleboro. teaching uh, studio courses? Or yes, art no, studio. Stu studio courses, yes. Mm -hmm. And graphic design, actually, because that was my specialty as, a, as an undergraduate. And um, I'd also been employed as a graphic designer, so I had some experience and I was able to teach. Was it going to UMass that brought you to this area from, uh, from New Haven? From New Haven. My husband, um, I remarried, <laughs> which was nice after quite a long period of being a single mom. And um, so with my two children, uh, we decided, he and I decided it was really good for him to take a teaching job at a, um, a boarding school. So actually he was employed at, and still is employed at Northfield Mount Hermon School. And it was great for me because I was sort of freed up a little bit to do uh, more of my own work and not have to be constantly thinking about being a single mom and providing and so forth. So Isn't that nice that to have a patron? It was very nice, yes, and still is very nice. Yeah. 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 So, uh, <coughs> and a husband, too. And a husband, too, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, a partner in life, a is, partner very in life. is very important. Right. Yeah. Well, um, what uh, you said you studied art in, in, in England, mm -hmm. so that was an, uh, a, a direction that you knew you were going to be going into. I always did love art, yes, making paintings and, but mostly paintings, yeah, and drawings, yeah. Ever since I was a, a little tiny child, I, that was like my go-to thing. I loved just losing myself in, in that kind of world, yes. So I never really wanted to do anything else. Hmm. Parenthetically, everybody I interview says that. Is that right? So mm -hmm. the question would be is everybody I interview meant to be an artist and that's how they started or does everybody paint and draw and some of us continue being mm -hmm. artists and some of us do not mm -hmm. i'm not going to do that research right. but <laughs> it's an interesting it is a good question yes. yeah. so um so now we've we've got you teaching art yes and did you teach beyond uh when you were a graduate student yes i taught at um well once I got out of and finished my graduate degrees, by that time my children were ready to go to college. So I needed to bring in a paycheck, a decent paycheck. So I got a, a teaching job at um, a middle school where I was the only 
person, I was the art department, and um, I stayed there for two years. It was very hectic. I had 500 students that just kind of came through all every week, and um, the behavior problems were pretty hard to deal with. So I didn't feel like I was really teaching art so much as, you know, sort of a little bit of art with the kids who really wanted it, and a lot of sort of, you know, keeping things together <laughs> with behavior. <laughs> so um, I did that for a while, and then I got another job um, teaching both high school and middle school, and that was uh, better, more interesting for me because the the students were a little bit more interested at the upper levels, and um, unfortunately. As you know, probably with education and art education, there's a lot of budget cuts in my district. And even though my job wasn't cut, another person's job was cut, and she'd been in the district much longer than I had, so she was able to take my job. So that's just the way the contracts are with schools these days. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, I ended up not That's teaching. the end of the teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the beginning of really spending your time painting. Right, right. So. Uh, I understand that what we're looking at here is fairly recent from the last three yes, years. Yes, most of it is. But right. the large, that you have actually much larger pieces. Oh, yes, I do. That yeah. we don't have here right. to show. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, well, we're looking at Jenny Tibbetts' recent work from mm -hmm. the last three years. Yes. And um, I'd love you to talk to us about it. Uh, should we begin with some of the older pieces that are here? And older, we're just talking about three years ago. Right. So I think that's over here on, on uh, the yes. far left. Um, Do you give them names? That one is called Backwater. And um, it came from, I was driving uh, from Brattleboro to um, where I live in Northfield. And there's some beautiful areas of the Connecticut River that are sort of backwaters. They're not, they, they sort of yes. come off the, the main flow and make these nice areas. And so I was really quite fascinated with those. and Let, let me ask you yes. something. Do you stop and paint there, or do you photograph no, and go I home? No, I tend to photograph, yeah. So um, you're working off of a photograph? I, I work off a photograph, but as you can see, it's not very naturalistic. And so I, I, I sort of interpret the photograph in my own way mm -hmm. and simplify a lot. And, and we're talking color. oils here. Yes, and the color is, is much more um, intuitive as far as I'm concerned than naturalistic, so I enhance colors and, you know, one, once I get the, the painting, the kind of the, the layout of the painting, then I have to respond to color and, and how it works within the painting as opposed to, you this know, just copying a photograph. Does this apply to the second yes. one here mm -hmm. too? Yes. Because right. uh, though the, the, the pink in the grass mm -hmm. is, uh, or, or whatever that is, is doesn't feel naturalistic, right. but it feels just right. Well, it was fall, and there were a lot of um, pinkish, orangish, brownish colors on the ground, and I, you know, I just sort of enhanced those colors to make them the way I, you know, I, I visualize my own interpretation of the of the landscape. Yeah. So you go th you go around and you see something that really captures you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you capture it on film. For the most part, yes, I do. So you always go around with a camera? Uh, I try to have one in my car, yes, at mo most times. Uh -huh. I, I, sometimes if I don't, I'm very upset because I'll see something and I'll go, oh, I don't have my camera with me. And, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, yeah, I, it's, very, it's hard for me to go out into the field and do plein air painting. Um, Why is that? I find it very hard to interpret. I, you know, I, it's more of a kind of a, when I'm in my studio, I feel much more at ease and much more sort of contemplative, and I can translate things more internally. Whereas when I'm out, there's so much stimulus out there in the in the landscape that it's sort of confusing, and I get a little panicky. So I think I I do better. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's hard to focus on a, sm a small area when there's so much out there. Sometimes. Well, the other know. thing also, it seems to me that a photograph already is framed. Yes. And when you're out there, mm -hmm. the picture is 360 right. degrees. Yeah. So, and then quite often I crop in my photographs too. Like I, I'll, I'll photograph something and I try to focus on the composition. Uh, and then when I get home and I look at them, sometimes the compositions are not 
as um, tight as, as I want them to be, so I'll crop in more or I'll crop an area that I like. So, so uh, wh which one should we talk about next? How does, how does what, um, what's logical here? Logical? Maybe well, we something haven't behind really, us? Yeah, we haven't talked about mm, abstract paintings, which is sort of where I really wanted to be when I first started painting. Um, I felt like abstraction was what really spoke to me because I could make up the colors and I could make up the compositions. And well, so let's talk about, I, I'd like to talk about the one that's behind you, actually. Okay, this one, yes. Because it seems mm -hmm. almost landscape-ish. Poss yes, possibly. I uh, think there's definitely relationships between these, and, it, and especially with my barn paintings, I think they kind of... Up here? Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's quite a bit of uh, shape. Uh, so, so similarity. So, should we start with the abstract? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Tell tell us how you you compose that, or or right. why you compose well, that. Well, um, I usually start just sitting at a desk with um, oil pastels, and I start kind of scribbling, and you know, sort of, and then I kind of go into my own world, and. With the oil pastels, I just put colored shapes down, and sometimes I'll take my thumbnail and I'll scratch into it an area or something else, and I'll just keep changing and changing and changing. And when I get something sort of about this size, um, then I feel, and I feel like there's a composition there, I usually say, okay, and I do maybe six or seven in the same period of time. With, with oil, um, oil pastels. Oil pastels, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, like, because they simulate oil paint a little a bit maybe yeah the colors tend to be a, a little garish sometimes I probably should invest in some more expensive ones but um, I can move it around and really kind of mm -hmm. physically get into into yeah. the, mm -hmm. the material and then um, if I like something I'll say I think I'm going to make this into a bigger painting so I, I'll paint it on a canvas at, at another point in time and then usually when I get to that point it's interesting how something small tends not to look as, as good when it's on a, often anyway, it doesn't look so great when it's on a larger scale. And, but then at least I have something to respond to. So then when I have something on a larger scale, I can respond to it and I say, okay, it's telling me it needs to have this done or you know, it's telling me this shape needs to be bigger or that shape needs to be different color. So it's completely based on abstraction. Intuition. There is nothing behind it, no, not at it's all. It's pure intuition and sort of whatever and this, I feel And this one here needs. behind me? Same thing, yeah. I think with this one... These I mean, are not on canvas, by no, the way. No, they're on paper, and I, I, I wasn't... You this know, is some oil on paper. Oil on, on prepared paper. It's gessoed paper. And then, you know, I think when I first started doing them, I thought, well, I don't know if they're going to come out okay, so I'll just use paper. And, you know, then I don't have to waste the canvas or something. <laughs> and then when I, if I liked them, I thought, okay, now I've got these on paper. So I mounted them on, uh, on a board. And then I just put them in a the frame. So they're... And what? originally had glass over them, but I didn't like them with glass over them. So, so how, do they, um, how do they relate to these shapes that are not abstract? Mm -hmm. Well, they are abstract shapes, yeah. but they happen to yeah. form abstractions into a barn right. or a house. Yes. Tell right. us about this one and that and one that here. And that one. Um, well, this one, let's talk about the one above you here. Sure. Um, pre you know, I, I was doing these abstractions, and I thought, well, nobody in West, this is sort of a practical thing, but in Western Massachusetts, it's hard to market abstraction like this. There's not a lot of... Um, you know, call for it. And um, I love the barns. I just love the, the local barns. And I thought, well, maybe I can uh, do these and not have them look too sentimental and too, um, you know, uh, real. well, they're realistic, but not, but they're still sort of abstract in a way. And so I simplified shapes and shade, you know, change shade into color, like purple and so forth. And I got involved with the idea of um, how, how, do I, how do I paint um, the surface of a barn, you know, the wall of a barn. Um, 
and not do all the boards and, and every little detail. And so I sort of look to these kinds of paintings. Um, the abstractions. Yeah, so to, to, to really You went back to your that. fingernail. Kind of, yeah. Sort of how do I do a surface and make it look interesting with paint? And not have not do all the you know individual boards and and all and that so that was sort of like what interests me a lot with the barns. Um, so it's it's a bit of an abstraction. They're too. very appealing. Thank you. They're very appealing. Thanks. Um, which uh, maybe we should discuss this this little threesome over here. Does that fit mm -hmm. into the same category? Um, yes. I think it's a little busier than most of you, right, I think. Right, it is. More, even more realistic. It's more it? realistic, and I'm not sure I'll, uh, that's what I re that's not really where I want to go. I don't want to become more realistic. I think I was interested in seeing if I could paint water. Um, and the reflection. And the reflection, right. It was kind of as simple as that, and I thought, well, maybe I can do these nice little buildings and just have them be really simple uh, and not too... Well, you know, I, th I, think, I think you can paint water. It came I think out you did really, really quite well. Uh, yes. I, I photographed, it was, you know, I think the other thing was my impetus for that was that one day I went down to the Connecticut River um, Unity Park, and that particular day the ice on the river was so interesting because it created these horizontal bands and yet the and it broke up the reflections and so i took a, a few photographs because that was what interested me and so the rest it really it really grew out of that um and i thought there was definitely a relationship between like these two paintings with the horizontal bands and you know that sort of geometry in a way of the, the landscape what, what do you call this one here that one is called um fall in the valley um, well that's fall in the valley too which one the one you told me had all the, the, the one with the pink. No, that's birches. I that's see. Birches. I see. That's yeah. fall in the hills. Yeah. And right, the birch. Uh, so this and is here. fall in the valley, which is, um, it comes from right near where I live in Northfield, actually, uh -huh. uh, part of the pi Pioneer Valley. Sort of, I was up on one side and looking across. But well, I, I, think I, I like that one actually nicely with this other um, abstract yeah. that we have mm -hmm. it right next to. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is. The, I don't know why exactly the yellow, the little <laughs> bit know. of the green, the the bit of the purple, purple that's yeah. in the hills right. next right. to the purple mm -hmm. in this one yeah. here too. So I, I see, I I think I see what you're trying to do. I think I'm, I'm you know, intuitively I'm, I I respond very much to sort of horizontals and color, and you know these sort of geometric shapes that, and then. I like this. I, I like the way this has a, like a big shape, and then it has these sort of little shapes on the side, things like and that. Sort of is also the same on this one too. Compositionally, I like that big yellow area, and then the smaller areas around the edges. So that takes us um, to to your urban landscapes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And four of them were in the landscape. Mm -hmm. Um, exhibit we had here, and w one wonders why I didn't take the barns. Somehow, I took I took the urban ones because I didn't expect anybody else to be doing right. urban. Yeah. And in fact, I have very few, you know, striking barns. I wish I had taken that barn, for instance, uh -huh. right there. Yeah. But th that's okay. It's yeah. maybe that's less landscapey and more building. This one here, the red one here, with mm -hmm. the landscape behind it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you said uh, did you you lived in New Haven. So, but mm -hmm. this is not New Haven. It's this looks like New York. It's Brooklyn. Yes. Yes. Um, or yes, I think that's Brook. These are Brooklyn. My daughter lives in Brooklyn. Ah. And um, on a recent visit, we were up on the roof of her building and looking around, and I just loved how the sun was hitting the buildings, and you know, some of them sort of drop out, like, you know, they, it, the sun creates this, uh, you know, some of the buildings, they just seem to almost dissolve into the atmosphere, and then some of the other ones are, you know, quite strong. So now I understand what I'm seeing here, mm -hmm. because from your description of how you work, mm -hmm. and how you sit quietly with your photograph mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at the real building anymore. No. And this is what works. Right. And 
I love knowing how the background to these stories. Uh -huh. It makes, yeah. I don't, it doesn't make me enjoy the picture more. I love them just the way they were, just the way I understood them. But knowing that is mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Um, again, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested, you know, like as in here with the big shapes and the small shapes, and again here with the how you break down a, a large shape and then contrast it with little shapes. You also said <coughs> that you like horizontals, but mm -hmm. this is a world of verticals. Yes, right. So that's a little different. Yes, I mean this is definitely Very a world so. of so your your right. canvas is sliced mm -hmm. vertically all mm -hmm. over the place, mm -hmm. and and that one, this one here with the tree. I like to call this one a tree grows in Brooklyn right. because there was a book. There's a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one has a, 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 has a vertical slice right down the middle. It does. That's yeah. not a common way to divide no, a canvas. That's not a really, it, you would probably be told not to do that. But I don't know why. <laughs> now well, that I look at it, I have no idea why people uh, say not to do that. It depends, I suppose, yeah. I'm not sure either. I think, <laughs> I, I think it's very, um, I love it. What can I say? Uh, the other one over there uh, um, with the uh, water tank, mm -hmm. which I think must be very New York. Do right. other cities have that? I don't think they I do. I don't know. I, they, you would think they would, but I, I, I don't know. Okay. A visitor to the gallery was looking at your work, and, um, and we couldn't agree on which building was in front and which was in back, and mm. I decided it really didn't really matter because there's a certain abstraction to the whole thing. Yeah, right. And there you have those disappearing um, buildings into the atmosphere that you were discussing before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the weather was, it was a, the time of day was late afternoon and it was kind of a gloomy day, that one. So it, it's more of a, I feel like it's a little bit heavier painting, a little bit of a heavier painting. Um, heavier? Well, in, I, I was enjoying the, the brick buildings, oh, yes. you know, the, yes, of you the don't Brooklyn sort of, you know, architecture with the rather, yes, rather solid, uh, solid brick. Yeah, that's true. The others don't mm -hmm. have that effect right. so much. Right. So tell me how, where are you going with this? Ah, well, <laughs> I wish I knew. And this is all oils. We're all, all talking yes, oils. Yes, they're all they're all oil paintings, and I, I do pastels, but I tend to they tend to be more sketches. Um, I definitely like the medium of oil paint. Um, with these l these buildings, um, I've been taking some photographs of uh, local mill towns because I don't always have access to New York. I'm going to go back and take some more. But and there's uh, Shelburne Falls and Bellows Falls, and I I have something on the go at home right now that's Bellows Falls, and I'm I'm trying to sort of interpret those local. Um, sort of urban areas in the same sort of way and I'm not sure how that's going to you know it, it, it's a journey I'm not sure whether they'll work or not I hope they'll work um, and I, I, everything you know a journey sounds a little bit hokey but I'm no, not no. really sure where it's going no, no. you know this I, is your journey I want yes, to know about yeah so originally when I started doing these I wanted them to be a little bit more abstract even um, and bridge that gap even more. So, I, I I was I wasn't sure whether I was going to blend these colors more or just keep them separate like this. So, you know, there's all kinds of things in my mind, you know, to try. Do you experiment and then discard? I mean, are you oh, willing yes. to try oh, yeah. something and oh, say, oh, oh no, yes. this doesn't work? Yes, plenty of paintings don't work. Yes. And do you just paint over them? Um, Sometimes they stay in my studio and when, you know, for months and I'll say, oh, I think I could make that work. And I'll, I pick it up and, and try and occasionally it doesn't work and then I, you know, sometimes I'll just take the canvas off and reuse the stretcher, which is a nice thing about oil paint too, is that you don't have to discard, I mean, you still have a stretcher that you can restretch. So it's the not stretcher is the frame. Yes, underneath the canvas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right. So I might just put new canvas on it. I usually don't paint over Occasionally I do, but sometimes the paint buildup is, is just too much that you don't too get much. a really good surface to work on. Well, people yeah. like different kinds of surfaces. True. Mm -hmm. we, you know, some artists even muddy up the Mud surface so yes, that they can right, get more. Right. right. And others like it silky so smooth. So silky, yeah. Right. I, I could probably thicken up a little bit. 
here and there. Really? What do you mean by that? I mean, you know, I could build up more layers and still, if, if, I, if I needed to. Um, these are not really thick paintings. Right. Yeah. I don't know where it's going to go, Jane. <laughs> okay. Now, I also wanted to ask you about size. Ah, yes. Yeah, because you said that you worked in very large size. Mm -hmm. what, what, what were you doing in the very large sizes? Um, when I was in graduate school, we were sort of encouraged to paint large, or it just seemed like the thing to do. I painted some very large figure paintings, um, again, a little bit abstract. Uh, and uh, it's very cumbersome to have these large canvases that people can't really have in their homes and gallery, or you can only show them in like a really big gallery, really. So I had quite a lot of abstract paintings, um, you know, like six feet or five feet by four feet or something. And it's, it's tough to, to, you know, you have to keep them in your basement and then occasionally you get to, to show them. But I, it's more of a practical nature to, um, practical. To, to, to make them smaller and more accessible. And it's easier for me to transport them too. So well, I, there you go. Those are all very are, yeah, practical right. reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you for sharing this information and these beautiful pieces of art with us. I, uh, I feel energized from this. Well, thank you. And um, I love having them in the gallery. And I look forward to other possibilities. I am thinking of a show called Boxes, Houses, and Shrines. Oh, that sounds ah, interesting. Houses, yeah? Yes, that I sounds great. Yeah. I'd well, be very interested. <laughs> um, Jenny Tibbetts, thank you very much. Is there something I didn't ask you that I should have? I don't think so, no. No, no? Thank okay. you. Okay, Thank good. you, Jane. That was That's sweet. great. <laughs> so to, uh, to the rest of you, thank you for being with us. I'm Jane Treger. We were talking to Jenny Tibbetts today and looking at her art. And next week, we'll be looking at someone else's art. We're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank, and this is called Talking Art.